So let's start by looking back at, at Sunday's game. Obviously not, not the ideal, the way it played out, but looking back at it, how do you see it? Uh, well, overall, it was, it was disappointing in terms of the manner in which we lost the game. I, I felt we, you know, we, we, we lacked composure, we lacked discipline uh, throughout the contest, and I've not seen that within the team for, for a long time. So that was obviously the most disappointing um, factor from the game. You know, we, we gave ourselves far too much to do. You know, I think we played realistically about 15 minutes with a full complement of players on the field with 13. You know, we had two tw we had a 20 minute spell of 11 men uh, on the field, and I think we lost. You know, Will Dagger in the 25 minute mark. Um, so we effectively played with 12 men for 50, 55 minutes, and within that, we've had, you know, two spells of uh, being down to 11 for 20 minutes there in total. So, yeah, I mean, I. You, you, when you look at the scoreline, I suppose what you can take positively from it was, you know, it was quite evident to see the competitive spirit within the group, you know, the, the fact that we didn't give in, the fact that we kept competing. You know, we got to within 10 points, you know, all 26, 16 down, and we make a line break on the next set. And, and if it wasn't for Joel Farrell's desperation, you know, tracking back for his team and saving his teammates, you know, Richie Myler scores with them within four with probably about 10 or 12 to go. I mean, not saying we... We, we, we should have been in that position. We've, you know, we've caused a lot of the problems and the issues prior to that with, with our ill-discipline, etc. Um, you know, because I think Sheffield scored right at the last sort of minute of the game to make it 32-16. So overall, you know, you, you look at that and you think, wow, I like to, to contend with all those things. I think we made, uh, I think we conceded 11 penalties, 11 errors, uh, two six against, three yellow cards, one red card. So to keep it, the scoreline respectable in the manner that we did, I think, you know, I've got to give uh, some credit to the team for that. Absolutely. But ultimately, you know, a lot of the, the pressure that we put on ourselves was self-inflicted through, you know, ill discipline or some poor decisions with and without the ball. And they're things that we've addressed and, and we need to fix up very, very quickly. Otherwise, you know, we're not going to be winning anything. So going forward, how do you address the issues of composure? If that's something you've not seen for a while, mm. where do you go from there? Well, we just got to obviously ask those questions. You know, why why did we sort of, I guess, get rattled to a degree, or why would we not show that element of discipline and make them make the team aware that look, we have to go through this process, and if if certain things are being said on the field or certain things are not quite going our way because a couple of you know, decisions at times aren't going to go your way, and you've got to accept that. And we're strong enough to handle that as a group. We've we've shown that time and time again. So. You know, it's all, all it's all obviously obviously just educating the team around the impact of when you have a negative action and then you compound it with another negative action, another negative action. Well, then generally the outcome is the opposition will score points. <laughs> Fact. So you know, we, we've just got to make sure that we we understand that clearly and and obviously we're determined to, to to fix those areas up. And that's where Sharon, to be fair, you know, if if, if players can't deliver that. That's when we have to then start making those you know, decisions on personnel in terms of who's playing and who's not playing. We've talked before about how you learn about your players as the season goes on. I guess yeah. you learnt a bit more at the weekend because of it. Yeah, I did. Yeah, well, I certainly learned that we haven't lost that competitive spirit. That's that's for sure, hundred um, percent. Yeah, obviously, I learned that. Yeah, a few of us got got rattled by and got drawn into the emotion of the game. Uh, like I said, it's not something I've seen for a while. So uh, it's not like it's been a continual trend for you know for, for weeks on end. So I've got a lot of trust uh, within that group of players and a lot of confidence in that group of players that they will respond in the right way um, you know, and deliver a more positive performance this weekend, which is what our aim is all about this weekend. And a chance to put things right, I guess, as it against yeah, Oldham. Absolutely. Well, it's a, it's an opportunity, isn't it? Again, it's an opportunity to say right the wrongs from from last week. Um, you know, like I said before, I'm confident that the the players will respond in the right manner uh, and deliver a more positive per performance. Whether the performance will be good enough, well, we'll see on the day. We'll come up against a very good side, but ultimately, we need to we need to see some progress from from the weekend uh, moving forward. As we speak, we don't know if there's any sanctions to come from the from the disciplinary following Sunday's game. Um, yeah. But even if they do, they wouldn't kick in for this week, would they? No, they wouldn't, no. So essentially how the process works is if there are going to be any uh, charges from the weekend's game, I'll, I'll receive a phone call tomorrow morning uh, and obviously I'll, I'll be given you know what the charges are, etc., and the grading. Then it's us then for, as a club to then look at those, assess them, Either we agree with it or if we disagree, then we, we, we start to put a case together to challenge those things. But ultimately, all players will be available this weekend. And then if there were any that were unfortunately going to uh, miss out moving forward, then those, those uh, I suppose, bans would take place from round one onwards. 
So as far as selection goes, again, I know you're, you're not going to give us your team and I'm not asking that, but yeah. where are you in your mind now with, with what you're thinking about selection? Yeah, it's a tough one. I've, you know, obviously, you know, post, post game, you, you, you know, you sort of, you, you go a certain way and then you start thinking and as you reflect and, and whatnot. But yeah, look, I've got, I've got a decision to make this week and, and, and it's pretty simple. You know, I either uh, ring a load of changes, um, you know, and almost say that's not acceptable or, you know, like I say, I give everybody the opportunity to right the wrongs because, like I said, so many of our players on Sunday, for me, there was uh, too many, to be honest, that were not bringing their A game and they weren't where they needed to be performance level-wise. So, you know, you can almost argue it'd be a little unfair to sort of, you know, drop one or two and then not, you know, because that's, you know, almost... You know, saying that they're they're the ones that fought when there was a, there was a lot of people within that group on Sunday that contributed to uh, to a poor performance overall. Um, so yeah, that that's the decision I've got to make. But you know, I've got time to make that decision. How's Brendan Santi? He left the field on Sunday. Yeah, he picked up a calf uh, a calf injury there, mate. So we're we're obviously just going to send him in for a scan so we can get you know the full details of that, and then we'll know exactly where we are with that and, and what we need to do moving forward. And was he the only concern to come out of that game? Correct. So moving on to your opponents, you said a strong side, Oldham of League One, but looking through their squad and certainly the, the coaching staff, they've got real ambitions this season. Yeah, they do. Look, they've uh, they've built a very very competitive squad there. Uh, I think they're yeah they're a League One club at the, at this moment in time, but I think they're a Championship team if that makes sense. So I think certainly the recruitment that's been done in the close season by by Mike Ford and, and Sean Long has uh, has been very very good. They've made some good acquisitions. Uh, there's an abundance of you know Super League and Championship standard players in that team. So yeah, we know we're going to be up uh, against a very good side um, that will challenge us. Uh, and ultimately, they're a very similar position to us. They're licking their wounds. They're coming off the back of a uh, disappointing result and a disappointing performance uh, the week before. So I think both teams will be looking to, to react in the right way, which will make it for a, a great contest. But hopefully, you know, we'll be able to uh, unlock them in, in the areas that we feel we can exploit them. And, and ultimately, hopefully, we'll, uh, we'll deliver a performance that earns a result. If you win, 80 minutes away from a, an appearance at Wembley, yep. at what point does that become more of a carrot for you? Oh, well, I think it's a, it's a carrot already, isn't it, really? I mean, it's an opportunity to win silverware. We're in a competition where, you know, it's it's a more of a realistic chance, I guess, compared to the, the previous competition that we've just exited from. So, yeah, look, it's uh, it's exciting. You know, it's exciting. And it's a, for me, it's a great opportunity. You know, we know York over the years hasn't had, you know, loads and loads of success of winning uh, major silverware. So, you know, for me, it's a great opportunity for us. You know, like you said, yeah, we're only a few games away from being there. But ultimately, you, you can't get ahead of yourself. We've just got to focus on, for me this week on us getting at the performance levels right because you know we know we we're way off the week before let's get our performance right and then we can build off the back of that hopefully we're, we've earned the right to be in the next stage of the competition and then when that does come around later on we'll address it accordingly then and finally, I'll ask about Charlie Severs, who was recalled from his loan yep. last week, was, was on the bench, I think, for Hull FC. Yeah. What's the situation with him? Yeah, we just got to, we got to wait at the moment. I think Hull FC are just in a bit of a predicament where they've got a number of, of players injured and a, a number of players currently banned as well. So that's why he had to be recalled back. Um, you know, so, yeah, it's kind of a, each week. I'm, I'm apparently going to get a phone call this afternoon to know a little bit more uh, whether he's available this week or not. Um, there's a chance he'll be involved with, with Hull again this week. Uh, Hendo, so quickly reflecting on the result of the weekend, uh, are you at all concerned about the discipline from your squad? Oh, well, certainly uh, after the weekend's performance, yeah, it's sort of not uh, not the right look for us, is it, you know, at the moment? But, uh, yeah, look, I think, you know, I do feel probably compared to last season, you know, we're certainly probably conceding on average more penalties than we, than we did last year. I do think that is an element of, you know, the fact that now certain areas of our game are being policed more, more, more frequently. Um, you know, and uh, obviously there's areas of the game now where there are harsher penalties for, for certain actions as well. So I think there's an element of the, the players, and I think that's at every club, if I'm honest, at every level, are, are adapting now to to those sort of changes. Uh, so so I was kind of always expecting that we may have a little bit yeah, more uh, than what we conceded last year on average, but not to the extent that we, we've sort of conceded on the weekend. You know, that was, yeah, was by, by and large, you know, the, the, the most ill-disciplined performance we've delivered in a very, very long time. Sunday's defeat to Sheffield was sort of marred by the refereeing performance. 
But are you just disappointed to have exited the Challenge Cup? Because were you hoping to go a little bit further in this competition? Oh, look, we go into every competition, every competition to, to do the best we can. Yeah, you know, we're not we're not stupid. We understand that the Challenge Cup would be a, a monumental feat to to reach the uh, the final and, and win it. Um, but ultimately, yeah, you, you don't go in to lose games. You go in to perform, and, and we you know, we saw that as an opportunity for you know for to get a, a group of players there to start to build some continuity and, and deliver a performance. And unfortunately, it wasn't the performance levels we expected. Um, so you know we, we're addressing that at the moment and hopefully we'll we'll deliver a performance this week in this next competition um, and be better than we were last week that's that's what we can aim for uh, Richard Myler made his debut yep. uh, picked up two assists uh, as two, well as two assists two tries yep uh, how impressed were you with him? Yeah, well, like you said, that was his first first hit out. So it's like anything, you know, when you have your first game, you, you've got to get a bit of the rustiness out. So, um, but I thought it was a difficult game for Richie and a difficult game for the halves and the hookers. Really, you know, when you're playing with 11 men for 20 minutes and you're playing with 12 men for over 50 minutes, it's uh, you know your kind of game plan to some degree goes out of the window. You having to adapt and on the run and um, yeah, it's it doesn't make it the ideal game for for a halfback, if I'm honest. But what I did admire about Richie, I thought, you know, he continued to. Uh, challenged the defensive line. He continued to, to compete. Um, he tried to find a way to win, um, and that's part of the reason why we brought him to the club. You know, he brings those attributes. So, you know, I'm confident with with Richie that I thought it was a good start point for him. Um, and again, as as the weeks go by and he gets more game time with with the players around him, then he'll continue to improve and and add even more value. Moving ahead to uh, Sunday's match. Just how, how, how much of a threat sort of can Oldham post you? Because they are doing very well for themselves. Oh, absolutely, people. mate. Look, a big threat. They've got some really quality players. Like, this. let's not kid ourselves, you know. You've got people like Wardle and Turner that were playing Super League last year. And, and you've got the likes of Lawton and, uh, yeah, Danny Craven and Jamie Ellis are both two quality halfbacks at this level with Super League experience. And, um, you know, even some of the other outside backs that they've got at their disposal and the forwards that they've got there too, you know. Like, they've all, you know, there's a lot of, for me, a lot of established championship level players in that team as well as some, you know, some Super League players that have literally just come out of Super League 12 months ago. So, uh, yeah, they're a good side, well coached. And um, like I said, we're, we're going to have to, you know, be, be ready for that, uh, which I'm sure we will be. Speaking of Jamie Ellis, seems you come up against one of your former players. Yep. Uh, how, how, what does that add to the sort of occasion coming up against players that you perhaps worked with in the past? Oh, it doesn't add anything, really. You know, we just, like I said, we focus on us. We make sure that we get our, our, our performance levels right. I'm not too worried about, you know, Jamie Ellis and other players, yeah, we've got to be aware of some of the threats they possess, absolutely, and make sure the team are aware of those threats, but ultimately it's about getting our own house in order at the moment, especially after the last weekend's performance. And uh, now in the quarterfinals of the competition as well, how pleased are you to have reached this stage? Yeah, really pleased, really, because we're in a tough group, obviously, with Wakefield in there, so, um, yeah, there was always a, a threat that we may not have been able to progress to this stage of the competition, and I know how much we value it, and we respect the competition, and we see it as a, uh, a brilliant opportunity to uh, to potentially win some silverware for this club, so, no, we'll, we'll be a, we're attacking it on Sunday, and, and we'll, we'll hopefully give uh, the best account of ourselves, as I, as, I, as I know we are a good rugby league side, um, and uh, we're a lot better than what we showed case last week and I'm, and I'm just hoping Competitions as an opportunity to experiment with a few ideas, have a look at a few people in different positions, assess everybody that was fit and available within the squad to see where they're at, and we've done that over these first four games. Um, you know, so yeah, I, it's definitely it's definitely proven to be fruitful from that point of view to allow us to do that. Uh, I know other clubs maybe approached it slightly different. You know, they've gone in and had a couple of friendlies, and then they've pretty much played the same side for most weeks in both competitions to build that continuity and that's that's fine, you know what I mean? But I'm also, I know it's a long season ahead and there's a lot of a lot of rugby league to be played and um, I'm mindful of that too when, when we're dealing with semi-professional part-time players.